Talk to me about why you want to move and sell our house and buy a new one. I am a mother that is trying to look far into the future for my children and the lives that I want them to have as they grow up. It's a very formative time for them. That's good. And I want them to be surrounded by their peers. I want them to be surrounded by opportunities for them to just find what they're passionate about and just get involved. I want to be in an area that I feel very safe. While we want to homeschool our kids when they're young, the fact is is that by the time they get to middle school and high school, I see them being involved in public Mm -hmm. schools. And I want there to be good public schools for them to attend. I don't want to put them in private school. And in general, I want to be in a place that I feel safe to go to the grocery store, even in the evening by myself. I want to be around restaurants for us to go on fun dates and not have to drive super far. Mm-hmm. So um, should I continue to add my list reasons why? Oh, I also see my parents living with us long term. Which I'm wow. kind of surprised okay. about. Wait, you're I'm actually ki- like, I'm kidding. I, I was I, like, yeah, wait, I we know. actually talked about We've this talked a about lot yeah. off camera and in private. Um, and I want them to have a place where they feel like they can have their own space within the house that we don't need to have our stuff bleed into. And I want to make it comfortable for them in the long term. And that's some of my reasons. So here's here's kind of my... I want a big backyard for our kids to roam like wild animals. So like, here's my thing. If we just had a money tree... I would 1 million, like, I'd be like, yeah, let's move tomorrow. Let's sell our house. Let's move tomorrow. If we just had a, a money tree in the backyard and it's just like, it, money's not an issue because homes are very expensive. Like, it, especially in today's economy, like homes are expensive. The real estate in Arizona is not nearly as bad as California, not nearly as bad as Hawaii, where we used to live, but it's still pricey, especially if you want to buy a house that has enough room for a guest bedroom, you know, an office, our children's bedrooms, your parents live with us. So we're not talking about just like a, a two bedroom house. Like we're talking about a five bedroom, honestly, is what we're talking about. And so, yeah, I mean, we live in an area where the real estate was more affordable. So we were able to buy a larger house to accommodate our growing family and our large family. But I think my fear is like, you know, I've read a lot of finance books about like investments and all that stuff. And one of the first things you're told is like, your primary residence is not an investment, which like obviously we've we've had these conversations and stuff. But I guess like my my fear just comes from this. Yeah, I just I just want our family to flourish. And I I and I want all those things for our kids. But then I worry about doing it too soon in case of there being, I don't know, a, a money issue or something. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I can't crack open our finances on the podcast, so I'm not going to really speak to that. And let me first say, I appreciate you being very diligent about our finances and being wise with our money and just like caring about that. I appreciate that. And I feel like when I hear you, I hear that we have a lot of the same goals and visions for the future. And I appreciate you wanting to do things that are going to set our kids up for success. Like I appreciate you looking into the school systems that are going to be good for the, for for them. I appreciate you knowing where the safest areas are for our kids to grow up in because we want our kids to be safe. I don't want them to be in danger. I would love for them to just go out and play at the park with their friends and us not to have to be there every second because we know that they'll be safe. So I don't know. I just, I, I appreciate that. There's stuff. a lot of young families where I'm like, I want to just be around a lot of young families because that's who we'd be friends with. That's who our kids would be friends with. So I kind of view our job, which is kind of like, this is, I guess our job. I, I view social media kind of like how I think some athletes should view professional sports it's like if you get a two-year contract to pay with play in the nhl or the nfl a lot of these athletes get chewed up and spit out in like a year and so you can make decent money for a year or two and then you're out and if you spend all that money it's your the money's gone mm, right mm-hmm. and so like with the social media stuff i just want to be smart with our investments with our savings because who knows? Like everything, TikTok could get completely banned. We've been doing so many TikTok deals. Like, what if they just delete TikTok? Like, that's legit a, a threat. We're recording this episode in advance. Who knows? By the time okay, this episode Matt, comes out, maybe TikTok's gone, right? Advertisers are still going to want to advertise on social media. And it's not like we don't have a presence on other ones. They're just going to remove, like, move their funds other to other platforms. I don't know. 
I mean, I, I totally appreciate you wanting to be wise with our money. And so I want to find a timeline that is comfortable for both of us. But I'm hoping that you can compromise a little bit more on your timeline. I think what's what scared me a little bit is at dinner. Was it last night yeah. that you said that you were eyeing moving in Mar- in, no, the fall. Not, in the fall, which like we're in May right now. The fall starts in like September. So that's literally four months, which to me, I'm like, oh, frick, like that is that is not that far away because I'm I'm down to move at some point. I just know like we just bought this house. I don't want to do anything dumb like I, and I'm not and I'm not saying at all that like the d- moving or buying a house right now is dumb I just know like if you look at how much closing costs are on a house it's ridiculous like the the fees and expenses that you pay out to realtors and all these different like the title company and all these people it's it's insane like the fees get really high and so you're basically just throwing money a- away um I'm throwing my time away right now driving so far to go places with yeah. our kids every single day yeah like and that's valuable too. Like I literally am constantly driving in the car with them, which is just like, I will continue to do it because I know that it's important for them to get out of the house and be around other kids mm-hmm. and find good activities. And our kids go crazy inside the house. Like they have to have an outing yeah. every single day. And so I'll continue to do it, but I'm just like really excited for a day where I can drive 10 minutes and be somewhere and not like 40 minutes. And I know that there's places closer to us, but um, yeah, there's just not a lot. And I think that anyone in this neighborhood would tell you the same thing. So yeah, there's that. And I think that like we both understand each other and that's what's important. I just know that I am so quick to compromise. And this is something that's like really important to me actually. So I'm like, I hope that we can find a middle ground sooner than like yeah two years yeah i think from my perspective since you found the neighborhood and the house that we live in it initially came as a shock to me when you were like now i want to move because well matt like i've explained to you when we moved here we were moving from out of state we were about to have a baby i had like a an urge to be settled and get things done because i want like i wanted to have a place to bring our baby home to and we were in a, part, a studio apartment downtown. Mm-hmm. I was like, that kind of pushes our timeline. And also, I think this neighborhood was perfect for us at that point. This was perfect for us. But since then, we've had two babies, invited my parents into our house, and like so many other life, like career changes have also happened. So I think that like while it was great for that period of time, and it's like while two years doesn't seem, it's been over two years, while it doesn't seem like a long time to live in the house, like big life circumstances considered, it's really not as crazy as like it sounds. I just thought of a really good analogy to describe our situation. Is it okay if I tell it to you? Okay. Because you make more money than me, Abby, it's almost as if like, let's pretend you had some distant relative that like passed and they were like loaded and then like they gave their money to their descendants and then you ended up like getting a solid chunk of money i feel like that's kind of the situation that we fell into with the social media so it's like could we go and buy a house right now yes but would that be the best use of that money for our family you know what i'm saying it's kind of like that argue yes And then me over here, the financial planner, finance major, almost major, I dropped out of college before I could finish my degree. Yeah. But I'm like, hey, let's put that money and invest it so that it can grow, you know, compound interest and do all that good stuff over time. And can you're in your speak? mommy area, era, you're in your mommy era. So I feel like yeah. you're just kind of like, I want to spend my money how I want. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, if I'm going to spend it at any point in my life, I want to do it when my kids are young since we have an opportunity to. But then like the finance guy in me is like the earlier that you invest your money, the more yeah. time it has to grow. And it's like the snowball effect where time the money in the market beats time in the market. That's right. Did I teach you that? You've taught me so many things. That's so good, babe. But yeah, it's like the snowball effect where it just compounds and compounds and compounds. And I'm pretty sure it's like your money is just like working for you in the market. And that's we why we do both. We get the house what, and we invest. But what if we can't do both? I don't think we're in, I don't think we need to do that because i'm not going to get the most expensive house we can possibly get which the, and that scares me too because i feel like as you get older your like your tastes you know it's not about it's really not about the way like i want the house to look nice of yeah. course but it's really not about that it's more about like the function of the house which like for me 
when you said that you wanted to move in the fall, that kind of scared the, the frick out of yeah. me, to be honest, because let's say we move in two to three years. So Griffin is, you know, three or four. Okay. And then Augie would be two or three. They're not going to remember this house. If we move in two to three years, they're not going to remember this place. I moved when I was four. I barely remember like my, the first house, barely. I remember that my uncle Bob broke his toe in our basement playing soccer with us kids. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's really it. My parents apparently had a waterbed. Don't remember it. Don't remember the waterbed. I don't remember practically anything from that house. And we moved when I was like four and a half. So my point is if it's for the kids, they're not going to even remember. Like if, if we move before Griffin's four or around when he's four, the house he'll know in his head, if we always stay at that house, will be be the next house we go into basically no, but i understand but I totally that feel like the the events he can be a part of the playgrounds he can play in like all that stuff does yeah come it's it's part of the new house deal you know but i totally get you like i want our kids to be in with that group of children that they're gonna potentially go to high school with or middle school with and obviously we'll we'll homeschool um at some point and but if, that's the other thing i want a space in our house where they can homeschool like we don't I really have that right now because I think to be successful in homeschooling, you need a designated area that that's just for that so they can focus if at all possible because Mm -hmm. otherwise they're just, if it's in their playroom, they're going to want to play. If it's down in the kitchen, like it'd be one thing if we weren't working from home like we are. Well, okay. We did just get an office space, which is kind of exciting. So what if we get rid of my home office and we turn that into the homeschool room? Would that- Would that be an option? No, no. Or we could turn that into That's the play. That's our guest bedroom. Okay. Um, could we turn? Matt, maybe we, we could turn. Agreed oh, on maybe moving at may, some point. Maybe we could turn this room because eventually we're gonna have a new podcast space. So maybe this could be the homeschool room for the kids. No, well, this is my parents' space. Or maybe okay, I'm striking out. Matt, we already agreed before filming this that we would be moving before the kids are like really in school. So why are you going back and trying to make this house like something that'll work for that? I don't know. Sorry. I just, <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything else you want to say about the house stuff or should we move on? Uh, no, I think I said my piece. Okay. Um, I feel like we have not reached resolution. We definitely have not reached resolution. How do we... But I thought we had. Like I was like in the next couple years. But then you said the fall yesterday but do you understand that within the next couple years means like the fall would be a part of that oh see i thought when you said the next couple years it was like okay two years from now we're gonna move like you said when would be the minimum last night and i said the fall and you were like pitching a fit well because you went and i said the maximum would be two years from now well because you went and looked at houses just to get and it's i think that we're in a position where it's like i we're not gonna move unless we find the perfect house because we have very specific criteria yeah and so it's like I need to be on the lookout, know what's out there, know what what price it's going for, know what neighborhoods I want to be in. So, of course, I'm going to start looking. Yeah. I just know that you are a very fast decision maker. And so, if you found a house and next week- And aren't you thankful for that? Because I decided to marry you very I, quickly. I, and I suck at making quick decisions. So, I am thankful for that. But one area where it is a little freaky is buying a house. Oh, my gosh. Abby, this was the- only house i've been only thinking about this for a long time here's the thing you went we went to go look at engagement rings very first engagement ring you saw boom are you gonna hold that against me also why are we doing a whole podcast with a pair of your socks oh i forgot that my socks were right there i've i've been without my socks this whole entire episode i should put on my socks did you do that on purpose no why would i do that on purpose because that's something you do so people would comment about your feet that sounds so weird and no i would not do that you are so weird if i was trying to do a funny joke maybe i don't gonna, know this conversation about houses is boring me now it, it's is it freaking you out maybe we should no save, it's not freaking me we out. could save it for therapy we could talk about it with our therapist we did and then our in therapy they were she we were on the same page but then as soon as i looked at houses you were like no this is not what we talked about and i'm like nope you that's actually men- not true well, you're you gaslighting okay. me let's ask karen her name's karen <laughs> Yes, it's Karen. Okay, let's go ask Karen. I was going to say her last name, but let's I was go like, ask that's probably Karen. wrong. 